Okay, you are recording. All right, well, it is 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, July 18th, 2024, and we call this meeting of the Municipality of Anchorage's Board of Ethics to order. Uh, Ms. Sleppy, if we could start with the roll call. Yes, Mr. Bellreeve. Present. Mr. Teagarden. Muted. On there. I believe oh. I saw him on there. He says he has no audio. Oh, okay. But he is there. And Ms. Mogadam? Present. I believe Mr. Neighbors was going to be absent. But, uh, Chair, you have a quorum. That's correct. Moving down the agenda, we have uh, approval of this meeting's agenda. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion to approve the agenda. And a second. Um, well, see if we can have Patrick's audio issue resolved here. Yeah, we should probably do that before we move on. Okay, yeah. Let's see if that helps if I'm logging out and in. Are you there? There you are. We can hear you. Hey, I can hear you too. I don't know, my iPad, I'm just like dialing in and sorry about that. Well, the second time's worked. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the agenda, and I've asked if we have a second. I'll second it. And any discussion on that? And hearing none, I'll call the question. The question is for the approval of this this meeting's agenda. And all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. Next, we have the meetings of the previous minute or the minutes of the previous meeting. That was for May 16, 2024. I didn't see any issues. Look good to me. No issues here. And do we have a motion? Motion to approve. And a second. second. And any discussion? Hearing none, the question is the approval of the minutes of the May 16, 2024 meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? And the ayes have it, and the motion carries. The next item for consideration is the consent agenda here. We have under A, item 1A through G, and item 2A. And do we have a motion to? Approve the consent agenda. So I had one issue on G that I wanted to discuss. Oh, yeah, uh, Kelly, this, this is Paul. So I was just going to update um, you guys. So I reached out to Ashley earlier today. Um, okay. It appears that she filled out the form incorrectly. So what I was going to suggest for a motion is I let her know once she responds to my email and verifies that she did, in fact, just click the wrong box um, that we could just make a notation on her form that says she has no interest. So the perhaps the motion from the 
for the approval could state something along those lines that it's approved on the condition that it's corrected if she just clicked the wrong box but it's not approved you know if she does have an interest i told her to let me know and then she'd just have to do a new form okay yep that was the one that i noticed so and then i would oh man uh move to approve with the exception or the condition that uh on ashley louise um disclosure that if uh if it was just a simple mistake and there is no um no issue with the um no disclosure needed then it's approved um, but if there is a disclosure that needs to be made that we would move this to the next meeting and for clarification are we moving to approve a1 and a2 or is this a1 a through g only are we separately considering the notice of intent to respond to public solicitation I think we should separate it just for clarity on the record. OK. And do we have a second? A second. And any further discussion? Hearing none, the motion is to approve consent agenda item A1 with the condition that the Disclosure at 1G is for there not being an interest, and if there is an interest, that 1G would be separate, separately considered at a subsequent meeting. Is that accurate? Correct. And those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion carries. Moving on to consent agenda item A2. We have notice of intent to respond to public solicitation by a public servant. I didn't see any issues, so did anybody else have any issues? I concur. I didn't see anything. <clears throat> and much the same. I didn't see any potential issues here. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion to approve consent agenda A2. And a second? I'll second it. And any further discussion? Hearing none, the motion is to approve consent agenda item A2. All those in favor say aye. 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 And all those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. We have no unfinished business in the agenda. And moving on to new business, we have a request for an advisory opinion 2024-01. And this has waived confidentiality. And I wanted to ask the question just because I had seen it raised in some of our email correspondence discussing a um, uh, an advisory opinion from the prior chair. I wasn't certain which opinion was being referenced there. Looking back at sort of the recent advisory opinions I've seen it, it, it seems like it might have been 2020-6 that could have been the one being referenced, but you know, any sort of clarification that anyone else has would be helpful there. I was just, I was simply just saying that it was, it was uh, um, from Becky. It was been... Yeah, so Becky Went Pearson was the prior chair before me, um, and then, um, so it looks like she's going to leave GCI and go work for uh, the new mayor. Um, 
Yeah. And this is Paul. I was just going to let the board know. So if there are any questions that any board member has for Becky, um, she's standing by so I can just send her a text and let her know and then she can log on and answer any questions that the board has. OK. Um, I didn't I haven't really had time to really consider this a whole lot. My only thought is kind of I'm curious what I mean is she still being compensated by GCI on like an hourly basis or it appears that that's what is it says she's on call for a limited number of hours per week so I would I would I would assume that it's paid I would assume it's it's paid at this point. Um, um, and I and sort of I my sort of my thoughts looking at it were that it, it does seem like the the controls that she's described here in her request do get at avoiding an incompatibility or conflict with the discharge of her own duties and use of leave uh, maybe a little bit less clear about use of lunch versus pto but also use of gci technology and avoiding the use of municipality technology is consistent with what we would be looking for here the only thing i was looking at is is uh there's no limitation to the time in here as far as I mean how long this occurs. Um, and so I would the only thing I I thought was, you know, there ought to be some kind of a of I mean this can't probably it probably shouldn't go on forever, you know. Oh I she, I had read, read that as through December thirty first yeah. of twenty twenty four. Yeah, through the end yeah. of the year. Okay. Yes, I and so you know, provided that, you know, we're looking at activities that would be within, you know, the, the permissible use of PTO and and yeah. likely, I think if we're not touching on to leaves without pay or otherwise using leave beyond what the municipality expects of its employees, that does seem to be consistent with the code of ethics. Yeah. I don't the have flip side of that being that if we're talking about extended periods of leave without pay or or otherwise, you know, the performance demonstrating that this is interfering, I think that's that becomes a problem. Yeah, I was just going to let the board know. So Becky called me and we talked about this quite a bit um, before she filed the request. Um, but the I think the relevant uh, provision at issue here is 115090, which deals with contemporaneous employment or service. So um, that states as an employee, I mean, she's authorized or, you know, it's, it's not prohibited from getting um, part time employment or employment with another uh, agency as long as the her employment is not incompatible with or in conflict with the proper discharge of the employee's municipal duties. So as a general matter, I mean, the code does allow it, but I think all the controls that she'd identified are totally appropriate and would be required just to make sure there's no conflict. You know, A, I think the biggest thing is she recuses herself from anything involving GCI, which she was going to do anyway. Um, and then B, that she's not using any municipal resources as part of her um, employment. So either you know, taking leave if she's if it's going to for executives, it's a little bit different because she's not an uh, hourly employee. So, you know, like if she, she's going to be working for GCI all of, you know, or for the majority of a day, you know, she should take leave in that situation. But if it's just like a half hour meeting or an hour meeting, you know, she can just kind of work around that and consider that her lunch break. Um, so yeah, I think I never... Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I'm I'm fine with that. I don't see a whole lot, and I mean, obviously, Becky is someone that knows far more than the average person about 
conflicts of interest and what to do when that comes up and if it comes up. I agree with all of the um, kind of limitations and, and stuff she puts on here. The only one that I was a little bit kind of worried about, not necessarily worried about, but um, she says she intends to recuse herself from any GCI related matter. Um, and then she also cites to her, you know, ownership of stock in GCI's parent company. So I think it would need to go beyond any specific GCI related matter to any matter that um, affects the business of GCI. Um, because that goes to any kind of um, internet uh cable service streaming you know compet like competitive right. business issues so it's not just gci specific related issues it's it's a little i think it would need to be a little more broad than that but i don't i don't see that as something that you would hide or not take seriously so um I don't see any real issues with it. I think the controls she's she's offered are are um, sufficient, and she knows um, conflicts of interest more than probably most people working in the muni, and um, knows what to do in those situations. So um, I would, yeah, I would suggest just say, you know. Uh, the board's opinion is it's fine. The controls uh, provided and suggested um, fit the situation. And if, it, you know, familiarize yourself if you uh, need to on the conflicts of interest and, and come to the board if you have any questions would be my recommendation. And I, I guess I, I do wonder if, you know, that could be accomplished in some part, you know, clarifying that our understanding would be that GCI related matter isn't matters only directly impacting GCI, but their, I guess, scope of business, right? Yeah. So, so that's to say not just something that names GCI, but impacts GCI. And yeah, I think I that's a good I say point. That almost thinking that she probably wrote her request with exactly that in mind. Patrick, do you have anything? I think I think those were those are excellent. I mean, I um i think the you know regardless if it's just because of this work time i think the fact that she owns the stock i mean she's aware that that uh you know that stock ownership um requires that she use good judgment and in the ethics on that as well i mean just just for you know for ongoing and i know that she's aware of it so i'm not i'm not concerned i, I think her controls are sufficient yeah, I think she would know that the uh, recusal on GCI ma related matters would uh, probably extend past uh, mm -hmm. the December deadline she put in there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I trust anybody to follow the ethics rules, it's uh, it's Becky. So. <laughs> And and uh, this is Paul, but I mean, just for transparency, I could. Uh, well, first of all, I could uh, draft the opinion if the board, um, if nobody else wants to do it, I'm happy to do that. But I mean, that could be spelled out in the opinion too, just for transparency that, you know, we're specifically noting that the the matters would include any matter that might affect a competitor as well, or, you know, could impact GCI's stock price. Yep. Yeah. And that would, and then that would extend beyond the December uh, right. deadline of her employ of her part-time or con on contract employment with GCI. I think having mm -hmm. that caveat in there would, would be sufficient. So I'm and fine. Talk, 
when I talked to her, I mean, that's why she mentioned the stock uh, in there as well, because I mean, the, the point that she was making is that even if she wasn't employed by GCI, she would still recuse herself from anything involving them or their competitors, regardless of whether she was uh, still working part time for them. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Paul. Yeah, yes, I would. I would uh, just. To protect her in this right here, I would I would make it clear that the stock is also a, you know, um, one of the primary considerations and not I mean, the way it was put into into the package, it was kind of just like a, uh, like a side note. I would I would uh, make sure that um, just so that it, there's no confusion in the future that um, uh, that this was a major consideration of this as well as the working uh, just so that you know nobody in the future that has a complaint can go over and, and say that it wasn't uh, you know wasn't a major consideration in this um, in her request so okay yeah I could definitely make that clear I mean just so everybody's uh, so there's full transparency I mean that she will exactly. be expected to be you know, recusing herself from anything involving GCI. Okay. And I guess in the interest of completeness, uh, she does request an opinion of the board confirming whether there's any additional uh, steps she should take beyond the control she's described to ensure that this arrangement doesn't violate the municipal code. Is there anything else that the board feels like is further preventative action or other things that would need to be done to ensure that this is consistent with the code of ethics. I'm sorry, I missed that. Can you say that again? Hold on, let me find less words. Uh, is there anything else she should do? Just kind of responsive to that question she has at, at the last sentence of her request. I couldn't think of anything. And I trust Becky, she she knows the rules. And I know when this like, when this first came up, she um she reached out to me asking if I knew the best course um, for her to take. And um, so she, from day one, she's been um, finding the right channels and, and uh, asking the right questions. So but oh, this is, here right now, I can't think of anything else to add to that list. This is Paul. I, I was just thinking of one because her request does say it's going to be a limited number of hours per per week with GCI and we can just note in there that you know it's it's approved with the understanding that it's not going to be in conflict with the proper discharge of the employee's municipal duties but if that you know expands or it becomes more time consuming that she I think would be expected to let her um, supervisor let the mayor know that you know this is taking away from municipal duties or it's becoming too time consuming. Okay. I think that's fair. But with all of that, do we have a motion? I would uh, move that uh, we uh, that we request that, uh, that Paul would go over and write the advisory opinion for us, and that uh, it be considered and reviewed on the next uh, on the next board meeting. Uh, can I change that a little bit? Please do. Um, I think I don't, Paul. I don't know how much you've got on your plate right now, but I know she was. She's supposed to start the end of this month. I think is what she said. Transition into the role July 29th full time. Is there any way we could get her a decision sooner? Um, would we be able to perhaps have or ask Paul to prepare that for? Uh, Chair and co-chair, co-chair, 
vice chair uh, for approval consistent with what our discussion was today. Yeah, I guess that would be the the two options. I mean, drafting it up shouldn't take long. I could easily get that done. I, I do have some hearings tomorrow, but probably within a couple of days I could get this drafted up. But the issue would be then, I mean, there's some substantive things in there. Um, if all the board, you know, I think wants to review it, then that would have to be at the next meeting. It, I think the board has gotten in. There's been some issues in the past where we circulated drafts back and forth and everybody reviewed them and that was done off the record. Um, that the consideration and debating changes and stuff should all be done during the meeting, during the deliberative sessions. Unless the board just approved the chair to, or vice chair just to review it and sign off on it if they're okay with it. Um, on this issue, I think I'd rather, I, uh, I, I think it's more prudent or, to have the entire board take a look at the draft and if there's any substantive changes or anything that needs to be discussed, um, we try to fit in maybe like a special meeting if possible. I mean, if it's, if it's urgent, I mean, I don't, I guess I could ask, I don't really know how urgent it is because, um, I mean, she's right now asked for the advisory opinion. She has, you know, it'll be approved within the next month. I don't know if it would necessarily need to be approved um, before she started work for the municipality. Um, but yeah, I agree that when the board, when the chair has to approve decisions that they've been like real simple, you know, sometimes declinations or something like that. I do think that this is something that everybody should look at and approve before it's issued. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, OK, well, how about we? Um, well, could we just so I could draft it up and uh, I could reach out to Becky and just ask her if it's urgent. If it is urgent, then we could work on maybe uh, scheduling a special session that we would meet just to approve this. But if it's not, you know, we could just approve it at the next monthly meeting. That would be great. That's what I was going to suggest, but I didn't want to put more work on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's fine. I'm happy to do that. So. OK. That worked for everyone else. That say it again. I apologize. I'm, uh, say it again. What's, what's the solution? So track. Paul would uh, draft up the uh, opinion and then he's going to reach out to Becky and see if it's urgent to where we would maybe need to schedule a, a special meeting this month to get it uh, approved before she starts full time employment with the Muni. Otherwise, if it's not urgent, then we just take it up at the next meeting. Is there a way that we? Sorry, go ahead. Is there an informal way? That we could uh, that we could communicate to her that the controls that she had appear to be uh, sufficient, and that the and the opinion will be will be drafted, and if need be, um, we'll hold a special session. But otherwise, it would be it would be uh, reviewed by the board at the next meeting. Yeah, I think that would be a solution as well, because then it's not even urgent at all. I mean, we, the board could just uh, task me with drafting the advisory opinion and then also with sending her an email, letting her know that, you know, the board intends to uh, uh, issue an advisory opinion. But, you know, as long as in the meantime, you stick with the controls that you have identified in your request on um, the board does not have any problems with that course of action. So let me let me revise if I can the. Uh, the motion I move that uh, we request Paul to go over and to draft the advisory opinion, and that perhaps the chair could uh, could uh, could communicate to Becky that uh, the intent uh, that the controls appear to be in place, and that uh, the advisory opinion would would be consistent with her 
with her controls and would be uh, and it'll be reviewed at the next board meeting unless there is an urgent need sooner. I will second that. All right, and is there any further discussion? So the motion is to request that Paul draft the advisory opinion consistent with our discussions this evening and that the chair would communicate with Becky indicating that the controls that appear to be in place are consistent with what the board would expect and that the advisory opinion would be reviewed at the next meeting unless there is an urgent need for it to be reviewed sooner. You did a great job on that. Thank you. Wow. Outstanding. Thank you. With no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 And all of those opposed. The ayes have it and the motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening is member comment. And do we have any comments of the members? Not for me. Nope. And none for me. Moving down the agenda, our next item is audience participation. I do not see anyone aside from the five of us present in this meeting. And the next item on our agenda is the scheduling of our next meeting, August 15th, 2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. Does that work for all members present? As of right now, it works for me. Works for me at this I point. It, I asked if it works for everyone. I would probably be creeping to pull up my own calendar. That does work for me. Does that require a motion? No, it does not, Chair. But the next one does. Our, the next one does. Yeah. Well, the next one is uh, probably the one everyone looks forward to, and that is adjournment. Do I have a motion? Move we adjourn. I will second. I'll second. And is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And all those opposed say nay. And the ayes have motion to adjourn carries at 7.34 p.m. All right, thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Always appreciate your willingness to work until darn near 8 o'clock p.m.